Adam Zucker with you from New York. Coming up next, game two of our doubleheader, an SEC showdown between Colin Sexton and Alabama in a visit to Rupp Arena, where the Tide hasn't won since 2006. Kentucky on a four-game losing streak, their longest under John Calipari. We'll get you out to Andrew Catalan and Steve Lapis right after this. CBS Sports College Basketball Coverage is sponsored by Jersey Mike Subs. Be a sub above. Infinity, empower the drive. And by Progressive Insurance, your first round pick for car insurance. Rock Arena is rocking for game two of our doubleheader on CBS. An SEC matchup between Alabama and Kentucky. A look at the starting lineups, and Alabama is 7-1 with this starting five for Kentucky. Kevin Knox coming off a 19-point performance in Wednesday's loss at Auburn. With former Villanova coach Steve Lapis, I'm Andrew Catalan. We thank you for joining us from a sold-out Rupp Arena. Kentucky trying to stop a four-game losing streak. The first time they've lost four in a row under John Calipari. Yeah, he's not used to it. It's been a while. It's been 15 years since he's lost four in a row at Memphis. Amadou Diallo's first shot rolls around and out. He said it, it's good for the soul to go through something like this. Yeah, I just wish it was someone else's <laughs> yeah, soul, is what he said. <laughs> Alabama, meanwhile, has won two in a row, tied for third in the SEC. Daniel Giddens back out to Dejan Ingram. And the Red Hawk, Dante Hall, with seven on the shot clock. It'll be Ingram for three, and it's good. Alabama on the board first. That's a big difference in his game. He made two of those against LSU. We talked to Avery Johnson before the game. He said that's a huge thing in days on Ingram's game because he can get to the basket, especially if people have to play him from the three-point line. Down low, Nick Richards throws it down. Alabama and Kentucky both are terrific defensive teams, but that time the dribble penetration cost Alabama. Usually they're very good at stopping that. That time, not a great job, and that led to the duck by Richards. And Steve, two teams that are very similar in style. And, and three, two of the youngest teams in America, matter of fact, Kentucky is the youngest team in America, and Alabama's third youngest. Much better defensively, both teams than offensively. Neither shoots the three well. Top eight in the SEC standings. Alabama tied for third. Kentucky at six and seven. They are currently tied for seventh. As Daniel Giddens picks up the foul for the Crimson Tide. He is prone to foul trouble. The crew today, Carl Hess, Jeffrey Clark, and Todd Austin. And you can expect Alabama to be 90% man-to-man. -man. They'll play a little zone, about 10% of it, if they feel like they're getting beat off the dribble. And we have an illegal screen set by Hamadou Diallo. That's been a big point of emphasis this year. We've seen a ton of illegal screens called, especially off of handoffs. John Calipari, we were at his practice yesterday here in Lexington a good two and a half hours, and I think it's fair to say that the majority of that practice was spent on what Kentucky needs to do, not as much about the Alabama scouting report. As Cal told me after practice, he, this is the most teaching he's had to do this late in the year. Even though he's always had freshmen, he's had to do a lot more teaching with this particular group. And a long practice the day before a game. And very long, and a half an hour of film, too, so three hours total. Ingram baseline, reverse lane, and it go. And now numbers for Kentucky. He should have taken that up on the same side he was on. He would have got fouled. Got this. Shea Gilchus Alexander to Richards. This Kentucky team, in the first 22 games of the year, 10 points a game in transition. In the losses, only five points a game in transition. They must get out in transition. Here's Hall down low. Tough shot is good. This guy's been unbelievable. Dante Hall, 75% from the field. He'd be leading the nation if he had five attempts a game. He's got five baskets a game. He's got 4.8. Almost there is when Wim Gabriel uses glass. Well, you can see the game plan for John Calipari is we need to attack the rim off the dribble, and that's what they're being successful at right now. All three Kentucky field goals in the paint so far, and we have a foul called against Kentucky. That'll go on Kevin Knox. 
And a substitution for Kentucky is Quadre, Quade Green comes in for Diallo. Diallo has been struggling. Last five games, only been in double, double figures once. And Andrew, he's three for 21 from the three-point line his last 11 games. They are, they don't use the three, they only make about four threes a game. That's 346 in the nation. And now Kentucky in zone. Sexton's first shot attempt of the day is short on the three offensive rebound to Hall. That's the problem with zone. You don't rebound as well because you don't have a man, you have an area. Alabama lucky to not turn that one over. Now Petty launches. And another offensive rebound this time to Ingram. He goes right back in and he missed it. Gabriel attacking. It's blocked. It was Hall getting a hand on that one. Yes. Other way, Petty, and he is fouled, but Hall appears to have injured himself. Now, he's been nursing that right wrist injury. He still wears some protection on it, and he immediately came up holding his hand. Yeah, he has to come out right away on that block. He did have surgery in early January, but only missed one game. Meanwhile, Kevin Knox has just picked up his second foul. He is... The one guy that Kentucky cannot replace. He is their best offensive player in the half court, and he's their best three-point shooter. He's a guy very difficult for them to replace. So he did not attempt a shot so far in this game, and now Knox on the bench with two. And meanwhile, Dante Hall is leaving to the Alabama locker room. So that's not a good sign for Avery Johnson's team. No, that's a huge loss because lately he's averaged 18 and 10 his last two games. And in trouble, Gilgis Alexander calls a timeout. Back in Lexington, Alabama leads Kentucky 7-6. With Steve Lapis, I'm Andrew Catalan. A buzz here in Lexington. Big game for Kentucky. First time they've lost four in a row under John Calipari. And you know, when you have young kids, their confidence is probably a little shook right now. A whole, another home loss here to make it five in a row might really shake these kids to the core. So this is a big one for Kentucky today. Let's take a look at our AT&T Fast Analysis coach and take a closer look at Alabama. Alabama, one of the best defensive teams in the country. What makes them so good is they don't only help like Dazon Ingram there, they help the helper like Avery Johnson does on Dazon Ingram's man, and he contests that shot that's also what allows them to get out in transition a very athletic team that is better in the full court than they are in the half court like most young teams third season for avery johnson alabama has five top 25 wins this year that's a school record and kentucky worked a lot against that 2-2-1 three-quarter court press yesterday five field goal attempts so far for the wildcats all five in the paint Good sign for them, bad sign for Alabama. E.J. Washington has checked into the game as well for the Wildcats. Gabriel for three. It's good. Well, believe it or not, at 6'9", Wenyon Gabriel is their third best three-point shooter. So that's no fluke that he was able to knock that out, but it certainly helps. Kentucky makes less than five threes per game. They've got one here in the first half. That's a three for Ingram. He can't match it. And here comes Kentucky. Vanderbilt to Green, trying to get it back to Vanderbilt out of bounds to Alabama. Yeah, I think Quade Green's got to take that one up. Try to make a pass in a very small area. There's 23,000 fans that disagree, and, and their voice was heard as they've overturned the call. Yeah, that's a good call. Basketball back to Kentucky. Green fakes the three. Now just inside the line, misses the jumper. And it's taken away by Braxton Key. Here comes Sexton, end to end, and a foul is called. This guy is on the constant attack. He's number 25 in the nation in free throw attempts per game. He averages over seven free throw attempts a game. And you see why, he's so quick, so athletic, and he's willing to put his body on you and get it to the basket. Foul was on Quade Green, the fourth team foul against Kentucky already. And now Sexton at the line. And you can get the CBS Sports app for inside access to your favorite teams, watch highlights, get breaking news scores and more. 
Download the CBS Sports app today, and that is a great sign for Alabama as Dante Hall, who went to the locker room nursing that right wrist, is back into the game for Alabama. Tied a career-high 20 points in the win over LSU on Tuesday. And he's a big anchor in that defense, Andrew, because he's third in the SEC in blocks. I like the two different sneakers he's got on. Yeah, one red, one white for Dante Hall. Started doing that in the last game. No explanation why. Just thought he'd try something different. They won. He's wearing them again. We have a foul on the Crimson Tide inside. There you go. Well, I'll be honest with you. If he played the way he's played the last two games like that, I'd let him wear whatever he wanted. <laughs> the junior out of Luverne, Alabama. The only Division I athlete in any sport to come out of Luverne High School. Small town, they love them down there. And another foul on Kentucky. That's their fifth in just over five minutes. Dazon Ingram is one of those guys, he does a little bit of everything. It'll send Braxton Key to the line, but yeah, we met with Avery Johnson before the game, and, and he likened Ingram to an Andre Iguodala type in the NBA. Just can really fill up the box score and do a lot of the little things that the team needs. Yeah, he's a glue guy, takes it to the basket, assist guy. And take you take a look at what Alabama, where they are right now. They're sitting in a very good spot because of that RPI and that strength of schedule. And you know their bad losses are not awful losses, they're league losses. That happens sometimes, but they also have a lot of quadrant one wins, and that's a big indicator for the tournament. Six quadrant one wins, which is tied for the most in the SEC. We're tied at nine here at Rupp Arena. Sellout crowd. What an atmosphere here in Lexington. Here's Green with seven on the shot clock. Puts up a runner and connects. Tough shot. A great shot for a small guy to have, that little floater. Here's Sexton trying to get going for Alabama. The three won't go, and the rebound to Kentucky. Vanderbilt lost it, but a foul is called on Alabama. Well, we've talked about the youth in this game. Can you remember a time that there was not a senior on either bench, not even down to a walk-on. There are no seniors in this game. No, it's unbelievable. I mean, Alabama's 348 of 351 teams in, in terms of inexperience, and Kentucky's 351 out of 351. It's funny, because I asked Cal yesterday, and he said, I said, what's going on? He says, you know, we're really young. I said, you're young every year. Well, you're not used to this by now, but the difference is they have when in Gabriel's a sophomore, they usually have a junior here and there. They don't have that at all. 87% of their points come from freshmen. As Diallo misses, it's taken away by the tie. Here comes Key, attacking offensive foul. Great job by Quade Green getting back and holding his position and letting a guy much bigger than him run him over. And that's the second foul on Key, so he comes out. First turnover today by Alabama. And that offense, which comes and goes for the Crimson Tide, approaching nearly four minutes without a field goal. Inside, we have a travel on Kentucky. It, it, it's amazing how similar these teams are. They're both terrific defensively. They both are much better in a, in a transition game. They don't shoot threes. They turn it over a lot in the 250s in terms of turnover percentage. But that's a young, two young teams. Herbert Jones has checked in and he turns it over. Here comes Green the other way. Green all the way for two. Wow, Quade Green, that was a heck of a shot over Alabama's best perimeter defender, one of the best defenders they had in Herbert Jones. Crowd on their feet here at Rupp. Jones.
Edwards inside and the foul and that will quiet the crowd for the moment. Boy, it looked like Alabama was going to be in big trouble on this possession here, and they just fell asleep. Amadou Diallo let Herbert Jones get around him, and he ended up trailing. Foul was on Jared Vanderbilt. That's his first. A chance for Jones, a freshman out of Greensboro, Alabama, to complete a three-point play. He can't. But he gets the rebound. He gets it back to Ingram. Big rebound by Jones. That's the other similarity in these teams, Andrew. They don't shoot free throws well, either one of them. Both teams below 68%. How about Reese for three? It won't go. And the rebound to Diallo. Three offensive rebounds early on for Alabama. Washington's jumper won't go. And Hall takes it down off the glass. Calipari did not like that shot, not one bit. Ingram high off glass for two, ties it at 13. He wants them looking to take it to the basket. He certainly didn't need that shot in the first seven seconds of the shot clock. Gilchrist Alexander getting separation. Can't finish, but there's the putback by Washington. P.J. Washington coming off the bench for the second straight game. John Calipari inserting Wenyon Gabriel into the starting lineup. Trying to give Kentucky a little bit more energy. As Reese's three this time is good. He's a big kid. Doesn't look like somebody who can shoot threes. Looks like a bruiser. Uh-uh. He can get inside. He can get outside and light it up. 66% of his field goal attempts come from deep. And as Gilgis Alexander cannot answer and reach the rebound. They've already had six lead changes here in the first half. Reese this time fakes the three, drives in, and scores. But they're going to wave it off. Offensive foul on the freshman Reese. And we have a timeout with 11.09 to go. Back and forth game right now. Bama by one. My concern is I got a bunch of young kids that at times don't listen. They don't trust. And I told them last night, I failed them. I haven't built enough trust where when I talk to them, I'm going to do what this man says. I failed them, but they've also failed each other because they don't play for each other. Very candid words from John Calipari after Wednesday's loss at Auburn. As you take a look at their tournament profile, we mentioned it before, Quadrant 1. They're 2-7 and seven in Quadrant 1. Explain what that means, Coach. Well, there are three ways to get a Quadrant 1 win. One is a home win versus a top 25 RPI team. A second way is a neutral court win over a top 50 RPI team. And the third way is a road win against a top 75 RPI team. This way, they're giving more uh, pop for road wins and neutral court wins, which I think is a smart thing to do. That's why the committee has changed their criteria this year. Right. The selection committee is using these quadrant victories now as big determining factors as to who gets in the tournament and where they're seated. So it's unfamiliar terminology, but it's very important this time of year as we get set for March. And, you know, I want to get back to one of the things that John Calipari said. The most important thing a coach can inspire in his team is blind faith. Not just faith, blind faith, where they trust every word out of your mouth. That's huge. And so is Nick Richards at 6'11", 240 with his third bucket of the game. All three are dunks. Ten thirty-eight to go, first half. Avery Johnson Jr., the coach's son, has checked into the game for the Todd. Here's Jones, his three doesn't get the bounce, and Richards takes it away. Washington nowhere to go, and he turns it over. Turnover number four by Kentucky. Well, it's the only competition that puts athletes, actors, and TV personalities against each other. See how they get along. All in the same house. Celebrity Big Brother tomorrow after 60 minutes on CBS. Alabama just 2-5 and five on the road this season. Trying to make the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2012. Now we're seeing Kentucky in a zone. Let me tell you something. 
These guys are big. They're the fourth biggest team in the country, and this isn't even their biggest team. They are so long out there. Petty with the shot clock at two, and it's good. John Petty, who has struggled in SEC road games, hits the three. You know, I've heard of freshmen struggle. I've never heard a guy average 14 points a game at home and three on the road, but that's what being a freshman is. You play better in the confines of where you're comfortable, which is at home. Green trying to answer, and he does. The ninth lead change in the first 11 minutes. When do you think about bringing Knox back in, coach? Oh, he's in. How about that? Trying to block Reese, and he altered that shot. And I like the move by John Calipari because you don't want to have a guy get two fouls two minutes into the game and then don't play him again until the start of the second half. He might be lost for the game, so he just has to be very careful, but I agree. Bring him back in. 19 points. He's 10th in the SEC in scoring at 19 in the loss against Auburn. This has become such a focal point of this Kentucky offense. So far, Knox and Sexton, no field goals. Gilgis Alexander at the free throw line, now backs it out, hands off to Knox, guarded by Petty, Knox over Petty, and the tip by Vanderbilt, no, and then Reese takes it down. Petty another three, not this time, and Gabriel is able to clear it over to Gilgis Alexander. A blocking foul is called. That'll go on Herbert Jones. I think it's smart for Kentucky to even push the ball in a semi-transition situation like that. Because the one thing they don't want to do is play half court and get stagnant, which they have a tendency to do. So Shea uh, Gilgis Alexander, I think, need to attack like that in every situation. Six team fouls apiece, so they'll be shooting the rest of this half with 8.15 to go. for three. Richards had it poked away by Giddens. Last touch by Kentucky. Good effort there by the sophomore Daniel Giddens, the transfer from Ohio State. 7.58 to go, a one-point game here at Rupp. Well, we don't expect to see a lot of threes, but we're getting a couple now. Back at Rupp Arena as we take a look at the Jersey Mike's game summary. Already 12 points in the paint for Kentucky. Alabama has got three threes. Their last five field goal attempts have all been three-point attempts. Meanwhile, I know it's a little special for you to be back in this building, Coach, an assistant on <laughs> Villanova's national championship team in 1985. There you are. How about that shot? <laughs> in this building, when you guys won the title, and I know you've been back once before, but that's pretty neat coming back here for you. Well, you know, it's one of the best moves I ever made in my career. I got to Coach Massimino first, so that picture's <laughs> going to live on forever. But it was an unbelievable moment, and being back in this building certainly brings back those kind of memories. This building is incredible. Before the game, the national anthem, all the fans sang the national anthem. It was very emotional, and I know basketball-wise, there's really not a lot that compares to Rupp Arena. No, there's not. This is one of those iconic uh, uh, venues in the entire nation. You come to Kentucky to play. I did bring a team here once in 1997. It didn't go well, as a matter of fact. <laughs> it was on CBS, as a matter of fact, and did not go well. So you're saying you don't have good memories <laughs> of all the time coming back here to Lexington. No, a few bad ones mixed in. That was a real bad one. <laughs> Field goes in the paint. Alabama three for five. Kentucky six for 12. Kentucky's been going inside, and they lead it by one. As Alabama's only scored three points in the last four minutes. Here's Hall. Good defense down low. Giddens is fouled. No, he traveled first. See, and a I, turnover. I think a bad sign for Kentucky for Alabama in this game so far, Andrew, is they've taken 17 shots, and 12 of them have been threes. 
Yeah, he shuffled his feet. That's a very good call because a lot of feet in there to look at. That's not easy. But they've taken a lot of threes. And I understand they're hanging in there now. They're only down one. But they have to be careful because they don't shoot the three well. And 12 of their 17 shots have come from there. So that tells you that Kentucky's doing a good job of keeping them out of the lane. Avery Johnson told us before the game the two Achilles heels rebounding and three-point shooting. An offensive foul on Gabriel. And I think it's a credit. They're not trying to shoot threes, but that's what they're getting because Kentucky's not allowing them to drive the ball. Oh, that's an easy call. And it's not easy to shoot threes against Kentucky. They have the second best three-point defense in the country, holding opponents to 29%. Well, ironically, that's one of the big similarities in, this in these two teams we didn't talk about because Alabama's in the top five in the country in that category also. Hall, 15-footer, is good. This guy doesn't miss a shot like ever. Now, I understand he's got six, how about the 60 dunks on the season? I don't know if I've ever heard of that. 120 field goals made, half, exactly half, 60 dunks. He leads the SEC with those 60 dunks. Well, I guess that he, he touches 12 feet, one inch vertical. That's <laughs> high up. That's two feet above the rim, by the way. A lot <laughs> higher than us. <laughs> As Green has had a nice little spark off the bench today. See, it, Green, Knox, and Gabriel are the three best three-point shooters on the team. So if he can knock out some shots, huge difference. Green's got nine points. He averages nine points per game. Sexton still without a field goal. Here comes Vanderbilt. Look at this big guy bringing up the floor. And a foul is called. But we were marveling. We were talking about the game against Auburn, the way Vanderbilt brings the ball before the a point forward. Yeah, and that's a 6'9 guy who's doing this, by the way. Foul is on Ingram. It's a one and one for Kentucky. I'll tell you one thing, though. Besides everybody on Alabama, the big guy who's not getting into the lane at all is Colin Sexton. They are doing a great job on him on these pick and rolls. Cal talked yesterday a lot about walling up pick and rolls, and that's what they've been doing, and he's had all kinds of trouble getting in the lane. First free throw attempts for Kentucky today. Vanderbilt, 66% at the line, makes the front end. We've been talking about it, but these two teams are so similar. In fact, they have the same exact record at 17 and 9, but you see the youth. They both shoot the ball almost exactly the same, and we mentioned the three-point defense. Yeah, they defend every game. Their offense is very inconsistent, but young players struggle with learning how to play in the half court more than anything else, especially athletic guys like these guys. Imagine these guys in a high school game. You think they ever had to set up? They were just running and dunking and jumping. Now they've got to learn how to play in a half court. That's a tough adjustment for a freshman. A lane violation against Alabama, so Vanderbilt will get another chance. And they just, they, Dante Hall was in on the other shot. Was it his, was his white shoe or his red shoe? I'm not <laughs> sure which one caused the violation. It doesn't matter, or Vanderbilt missed it again. Well, that was really good transition defense by Kentucky. They got back and located very quickly. Sexton with the field goal. What a move. His first field goal of the half. He scored at least 15 in six consecutive games. The freshman from Mableton, Georgia. The first McDonald's All-American in Alabama history. Washington to Vanderbilt. Not there, but another whistle and a foul inside. How about this bucket from Colin Sexton, though? Well, you see, he catches it right there in the baseline. The help is not in the lane. You've got Vanderbilt way too late. Richards does not get to the line of the ball, and that's why he's able to score that. You always, as a player, have to get to the defensive line of the ball and get in the lane for the help, especially against a team that doesn't shoot well. Two shots. Vanderbilt makes the first. College Hoops continues tonight at 6 Eastern over on CBS Sports Network as number 24 Nevada looks to stay atop the Mountain West when they battle Utah State on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Vanderbilt playing in just his 10th game of the season. Did not make his debut until mid-January because of a preseason left foot injury. And 
He's still a little rusty shooting the ball, but his rebounding has come back quickly, and he's provided a nice spark for John Calipari. Already 14 bench points for Kentucky. Turnover by Alabama. Number five for Avery Johnson's club. You know, people might look at that as an unforced error, but I think the Kentucky pressure coming out on the ball real far caused that to happen. Four assists, five turnovers early on for Alabama. Diallo passes on the three, drives in, misses Richards, the offensive rebound. And it poked away going up, Diallo has it, he's blocked, still a scramble, and Diallo's foul. Good work down low by the Wildcats. Well, they're just working hard on the glass there. I thought Diallo had an open three-point shot, but I think right now he's confident. A little shook, takes it to the basket, and they end up getting a couple of chances. The crowd rewarding the hustle down low. And meanwhile, that was the second foul on Dante Hall for Alabama. And Hall is going to have to come out of the game, replaced by Daniel Giddens. After not going to the line the entire half, Kentucky now has six free throw attempts in the last 73 seconds. One more for Diallo. A four-point Kentucky lead with five minutes to go in the first half. Sexton splits the D, spins, and he's fouled. Wow, how did he get to the hoop? That was oh my goodness. And now it's oh my goodness as he's slow to get up, but thankfully appears to be okay. Well, splitting this double team here, because they were walling up, that's one of the reasons, but the spin on P.J. Washington, that is what you call shake and bake. Well, now Sexton heading off with a towel over his mouth. And the Alabama training staff taking a closer look at the freshman as we take another look. Huh. Did he land on his face? Nothing happened there. Oh, yes. He landed on his chin. Yep. And he wants to come back in and shoot the free throws. And the officials are saying everyone back on the floor. He's got to get that blood to stop. And he's running back out with the towel. And John Calipari saying, let's go. If he's not ready, let's, let's play. Put somebody else in. And his sub is Reese. And that's who's going to shoot the free throws for the injured guy. And Reese has only attempted eight free throws the whole season. He's six for eight. Sexton is now going back towards the Alabama locker room again. So it is Reese to shoot the free throws with 4.50 to go. Well, Avery Johnson's wife, Cassandra, gave him some good advice over the weekend. He said, why don't, she said, why don't you have a big dinner at our house on Sunday night, and instead of being Avery the coach, be Avery, Avery. Just be Avery. Be yourself. Connect with them a little bit more so they can see you in a different way. And he said, in a long season with young guys, it was great to have everyone over at his house. Just kind of relax a little bit. And he felt that it's all about trust. And that dinner on Sunday night at his house went a long way in connecting with these players in a long season. Trust builds faith. And that's what every coach's goal is, blind faith. And trust was a big theme of John Calipari's practice yesterday here in Lexington. Young guy, and you don't have older guys really to say, hey, this is what coach is trying to do. They've got to all learn at the same time. Dorsus Alexander connects. 
and that time they screened the top of the zone, which is a good thing to do. They were in 2-3 that time, Alabama. Didn't do a good job of keeping Gilgis Alexander out of the lane. First field goal for Gilgis Alexander. Over his last 11 games as a starter, averaging just under 15 per game. Key playing with two fouls. Gets to the hoop and scores. Well, I thought he could have been a travel there. Avery Johnson got out of that zone quick. No, he's still in. Washington's pass, he turns it over. And a tie up, the possession arrow favors Alabama. It'll be Crimson Tide basketball when we come back. It's a two point game on CBS. Kentucky leads Alabama 29-27. Let's take a look at First, we have a miscommunication on this pick and roll. We got two guys on the guy with the pick and roll. But look how connected Alabama is, the way they recover. We got a Washington is wide open. And right here, Braxton Key rotates inside to make the steal here. Instead of standing still, he rotates inside of his man. What a great job on defense. And they started out making a mistake and were able to recover with some good solid defense being connected. 11 lead changes, four ties. Nobody is led by more than four as we approach halftime. And coming up on at and at the half, Adam Zucker, Seth Davis, and Wally Zerbiak will have today's early highlights, including player of the year candidate Trey Young. The Sooners took on Texas and number two Michigan State at Northwestern all coming up on AT&T at the half. Alabama has to feel pretty good in this when they're shooting just 41%. Sexton only has four points and yet they're only down by two. Yeah, and they're not really playing their game right now. It's their defense, which usually it does, keeping them in it right now. Key for three. Sexton is not on the Alabama bench. He is in the locker room. We saw him fall on his chin a few moments ago. So Alabama without Colin Sexton for the moment. Gilgis Alexander, short, gets his own rebound. The big back is good. Three minutes to go in the first half. Reese steps into a three and nails it. Alex Reese with his second three of the half. I know John Petty's their best three-point shooter, but this guy's not far behind, and at his size. Sasha Kalia Jones has checked in for Kentucky, has not played the last two games. Washington can't get it to go, and a whistle inside. That's going to be a foul against the Wildcats. It's on Vanderbilt, his second. John Calipari has coached eight teams that lost four games or less in a season. He's lost four straight in the last two weeks here with Kentucky. Last time he lost five in a row in the college ranks was at UMass. You know, it's amazing when you can think of a guy who's coached that long and it's only like five times in his career he's lost four games in a row. I mean, twice at UMass, I think only four times. Twice at UMass, once at Memphis, and now once here. Yeah. That is incredible. Last five-game losing streak was 1990. It's a lot of fun post games, I can tell you that. <laughs> As he said, I haven't had too many situations like this. Number one adjusting here at Kentucky. Washington gets position and scores. Yeah, they let him get too good position there. And you can see Alabama not looking to double, but I don't know why you wouldn't double the low post the way Kentucky shoots the three-point shot. I would double them every time. Petty for three. And a rebound to Washington. And he stepped out. Alabama basketball. Fans wanted a foul. And good news here for Alabama as Sexton is coming back into the game. Uh, that's an easy one. Sexton's chin, as you take a look at this replay, is all taped up, but he's back in the game. Sexton has four points, and Kevin Knox still has not scored for Kentucky. Reese, turnaround is 
Well short, well left. I think he likes threes better. Diallo's three. Won't go. Jones takes it off the glass for the rebound. John Calipari wants this kid to make one so bad, I can tell you. Giddens tries the double, and he throws it away. Jones moved, and the, nobody was home on that pass. I think the big difference in John Calipari, this Kentucky team is, I mean, he's had John Wall, he's had uh, um, De'Aaron Fox, he's had some elite, elite point guards. And Gilgis Alexander is a good player, no doubt. But those guys were at the elite level, and I don't know if that's where they are at the point guard spot this year, but this kid is a terrific player. A whistle away from the ball and a foul on Alabama. Derrick Rose, I think, was another good one that Cal had. Worked out. Tenth foul on the tie. So two shots for Kentucky. Washington in the line for two. And be PJ Washington for two shots. He's a 61% free throw shooter. Well, tomorrow, he doesn't open up for interviews, but Secretary of State Rex Tillerson will for 60 minutes. Plus, Oprah Winfrey hears from Americans on the great political divide tomorrow on 60 Minutes. The largest lead for Kentucky in what's been a very tightly contested first half. A five-point game as we approach one minute to go. Sexton, now he's got six points. And that was pretty good defense. He turned the corner, they were able to stay in front. He just made a tough shot. Diallo, the redshirt freshman from Queens, hands off to Gilgis Alexander. Now Washington driving, puts up a shot, and it's poked away, it'll stay with Kentucky. But only eight seconds on the shot clock. Cal wanted a foul here. Oh my goodness. I think he was right. <laughs> that was a hammer job. My goodness. Richards is fouled. There's the foul. It comes on Sexton. That's his second. That's a really bad foul because they were going to they were going to get the ball back on a miss there and be able to take the last shot of the half. Going to get the, now there's 35 seconds to go. They give Kentucky another shot at the foul line. It's Richards who hits the first. I thought it was interesting at practice yesterday with John Calipari. He was reminding the team or really telling them the story of UConn in 2011 when the Huskies were 9-9 nine and nine in Big East play. And they went on to win the national title. Right now, Kentucky 6-7 and seven in the SEC. But the point is, they peaked at the right time, and they won it all. When everybody was stretching, he was just giving them that story, which I thought was great. But you know what? The way college basketball is this year, I wouldn't be surprised. That definitely could happen. You know what? To both these teams, they both have enough talent. Fans on their feet for the final 30 seconds of the first half. And Reese cuts and flushes. Boy, if you're John Calipari, that would drive you nuts to give up a dunk at the end of the half like that. They're going to take the last one. Reese has tied his career high with 10 points. Just the second time he's been in double figures all year. Five seconds to go. Diallo in the paint off glass. Gets the roll. Sexton has to pull one up. That won't count. And it's no good anyway in Kentucky goes into the locker room with a five-point lead. Kevin Knox did not score in that first half. Kentucky with 18 points in the paint, 18 points off the bench, and they lead it by five. It's 39-34. Halftime on CBS. Now let's go to Adam Zucker in New York. CBS Sports College Basketball Coverage is sponsored by Sonic. This is how you Sonic. 
Lexus. Experience amazing. And by AT&T. Great entertainment here at halftime. A first half that saw 11 lead changes. Kentucky up by five. Back courtside with Steve Lapis. I'm Andrew Catalan. We told you both teams could play some defense, and Kentucky did especially a great job in that first half. All you have to look at is the fact that Alabama averages 19 threes a game. They took 15 in the first half. That's because Kentucky did a great job of not letting them get in the lane. And the other thing that Avery Johnson talked about, rebounding, they didn't rebound well. Eight points to zero for Kentucky on the offensive glass. Now, Alabama on their last possession did get behind that defense with Alex Reese. Well, John Cal Tyler Perry took a gamble here. He wanted a double at the end of the half. And once you double a guy, if they throw out of that trap, look at Alex Reese on the weak side of the floor by himself. So they're able to get out of the trap. And now Quad A Green, look where he's looking. He doesn't see Alex Reese sneaking behind him. His eyes are to the middle of the court. Alex Reese sneaks behind, and they're able to get a dunk right at the end of the half. That is a tough gamble. Kentucky got 18 points off the bench, including nine from Quad A Green. Well, he did a great job coming off the bench. He can score, and that's one thing about Kentucky. Tonight, they're doing a great job of scoring the ball and combining that with their defense. That's when they're a good team. Here's a look at the Bud Light first half stats. You see the bench points. 18 to 14 in favor of Kentucky. Reese has already tied a career high with 10 and Knox scoreless sat for about 35 minutes of real time. He came out with 7.58 to go in the first half. He's got to get back into the flow. A lot of times it's hard if you're a freshman. Down low, Richards is fouled by Dazon Ingram. Well, how about during this four-game losing streak, Kentucky averaged 26 points per game at the half. Today, 39 at the half, the most they've scored in a conference game this year. They combined Adequate half-court offense, little bit of transition, offensive glass. That's how they're going to have to get their points. Second foul on Ingram as Richards connects. We mentioned this in the first half, though. Avery Johnson, the Achilles heel, rebounding. They were minus eight in the first half. And three-point shooting, they were four of 15. He knows what they don't do well, and those two things really stood out in the first half. They can't take 15 more threes in this half. They've got to drive the ball more. Kentucky now 10 of 11 from the free throw line today. Previous four games for Richards, he had totaled 14 points. Today, he's got 10. Giddings down low, nice turnaround hook for two. And that's a smart way to start the second half. Don't launch a jump shot, get it inside. First bucket for Daniel Giddens. Here's Knox. Over to Gilchis Alexander, who sets up the Kentucky offense. Diallo, a floater is short. Here comes Sexton with the tape on his chin. Sexton end to end. Lost it. No call. Giddens gets it. Wide open Petty. No good. And the rebound to Diallo. This guy on the road, how? It, it's unbelievable. He's he's seven for 43, I believe, on the road this season. He does have the steal here. Numbers for Alabama. Sexton into the paint. Back out, Petty. Did a good job by Kentucky to get back defensively. Petty, another three. It's good. I guess he got mad at me. We heard you. Second three today for Petty. And a two-point game. And Kentucky can go through these droughts offensively. They have to continue to try and attack the paint. But Alabama, a tough defensive team. When you look at Kentucky's four-game losing streak, they really haven't gotten blown out in any of them, as Knox is still scoreless today. But the problem for Kentucky, close games, not able to close them out late. How will that play out today? Sexton baseline blocked. Richards all over it. Here comes Knox. Three on two. Diallo skies for two. He was one of six in the first half, but he converts to give Kentucky a four-point advantage. Well, they're one of the best shot blocking teams in the country. Actually, again, another one of those stats both these teams are. Alabama averages six blocks. Kentucky just over five per game. 
Petty hands it off down low, and Hall gets the roll. He's starting to get the ball in the paint now a little bit, Alabama. That's not good for Kentucky. Alabama has lost eight straight against Kentucky. They have not won since 2013 when Mark Gottfried was the Crimson Tide coach. A little stagnant right now. Gabriel, offensive foul. And that's his third. Well, this is a great job by Dazon Ingram seeing from the weak side and stepping in. The most important thing in playing good help defense is knowing where your man and where the ball is at all times. And Ingram is one of those guys who has a great feel. Third offensive foul against Kentucky today. Alabama has started this half three for five. Chance to tie it here. Giddens trying to back down Washington. Giddens slips and he travels. I think they'd be better off putting Dante Hall in that kind of a situation. I think he's the better offensive player. I like them throwing it inside instead of launching threes, but maybe go to Hall a little bit. Hall with six points and four rebounds so far today. Coming off a career high 20 on Tuesday. Washington connects. You don't see the Kentucky kids make a lot of post moves. That was a good, solid post move that time. Avery Johnson calls timeout. 16 10 to go, and Alabama trails by four. Rupp Arena rocking today. Kentucky has a four point lead on Alabama. You're watching SEC basketball on CBS with our producer Steve McKee, director Mark Grant, our entire crew with Steve Lapis. I'm Andrew Catalan. We thank you for joining us. Ingram nearly turns it over. There's Sexton. I like Kentucky going back to the zone with Alabama starting to get into that lane a little bit more. Five on the shot clock. Oh, Ingram. Wow. Great pass to Key. What a feed from Dazon Ingram. Averages just under three assists per game. A beauty there. Keep an eye on Knox on this possession for Kentucky. Still has not scored. He's 0 for 2. Well, they try to get him going. Right now it's Washington. Draws the double. Vanderbilt connects. This guy can be a little bit of an X factor now that he's back. Kentucky bench is 8 for 14 for 22 points. Hall is fouled. Boy, that defense. And you can tell that right wrist is still bothering Dante Hall with a timeout on the floor. Well, one thing about this Kentucky defense right there fell asleep in the zone and just went in. Gabriel, where are you? And a look at the current leaderboard, Kevin Na and Graham McDowell tied for the lead. How about a guy I know from Philadelphia squeezing in 36 holes in February this week? <laughs> I mean, that is, that is admirable, my friend. Yes, it was beautiful. It was actually 68 degrees on Thursday. It was great. Rare golf in the Northeast in February. It's a little bit nicer out in uh, L.A. You'll see the third round coming up. All in the line. Dante Hall is at the line for Alabama. Just a 57% free throw shooter. And we saw in that last play and grabbing that right wrist. That continues to be an issue for the junior who had right wrist surgery in early January. Missed them both. But the oh. rebound to Key. Trying to go back up with it. Nobody there. Petty for three. Yes! Third triple for John Petty. I guess we came in talking about his six for 40 from three on the road coming in. Now he's got three made threes. That's half of what he's gotten all year on the road. First second chance points today for the Crimson Tide. And it happens on a free, a foul line box out. Shot clock inside 10. 
Gildress Alexander over to Washington. Offensive foul. The fourth today by the Wildcats. And now Washington is limping. This is what we were talking about in SEC games this year. John Petty drastically different home away. But since we mentioned it, he's made a couple of threes. <laughs> we came in prepared, and I guess he was prepared to take that video, that, that graphic, and not have us not show it. Washington had to come out of the game. That's something worth monitoring for Kentucky as he came up limping after that offensive foul. Alabama started 10 for 26. Since then, 7 for 9 until that miss by Petty. John Calipari using that zone a little bit more in the second half. Vanderbilt couldn't finish inside. Here come the tie. Petty the lob. Oh, look out below. Man, can he dunk. And Alabama takes the lead. He dunked anything. That was a bad pass. This guy dunk anything. I mean, he reached a full reach back, grabbed that, and threw it down like it was nothing. First lead since it was 21 to 20 as Gilgis Alexander misses. But the offensive rebound to Vanderbilt and a foul is called on Ingram. But let's go back to this dunk. Hey, I could throw this guy lobs because you could throw it anywhere. <laughs> that was. I mean. It wasn't even a good pass. I'm telling you, anybody can throw this guy a lot. I think the wrist might be a little bit better you after what? what we just saw right there. <laughs> Comes and goes, that uh, that wrist injury. You know, when kids make baskets, nothing hurts. Nothing hurts. Uh, it hurts a little bit that Ingram just picked up his third foul for Alabama. So he comes out of the game with 13.30 to play. Gorgeous Alexander, turn around, and won't go. Tipped around, kept alive by Kalia Jones. Knox, can he get on the board? Yes! His first field goal of the day. And Kentucky back up in front. They lead it by two. Petty back inside the hall. Gets Knox in the air and finishes. This guy's one of the most improved players in the country, by the way. And a lot of that has to do with John Pelfrey, who Kentucky fans know very well. Played here as Jersey's retired. Now the associate head coach for Alabama. He works with the bigs. And a lot of, there you see John Pelfrey, a lot of Hall's improvement. You can give a big assist to John Pelfrey. Inducted into the UK Hall of Fame in 2005. Former Mr. Kentucky at Paintsville High School. Former head coach at Arkansas. We joke with them before the games. They might, must have a lot of good memories coming back in here. He goes, yeah, but if we lose, I get a lot of text messages. <laughs> You're on the wrong side. Well, you know what? To be in the rafters at Rupp with the history of this program, that's pretty good. John Calipari's got a head coach on his bench, too, Tony Barbee. He played for the UMass. So a lot of great assistants on both these programs. Herbert Jones' shot was off the mark, and... Kentucky has it with 12 and a half to go. Knox from the free throw line. Good. Back to back buckets for Knox. He is their best offensive player. They can't play 40 minutes and win without Kevin Knox. He made a living shooting those runners from the free throw line on Wednesday at Auburn. Reese. And Hall cleans it up. This guy just jumps so quickly, Dante Hall. That by the time he's laying in the basket before you get off the floor. Hall four for four this half for eight points. Vanderbilt gets his own miss, puts it back up, misses again. He's got to kick that one out. Yeah, that's what John Calipari is saying. A little wild right now. Petty right at green. Oh, get out of here, says Vanderbilt. That's a bad choice there. Gilgis Alexander wanted to lob it to Vanderbilt. It was deflected and taken away by Reese. What a pace to this game right now. Key three, no. Hall fighting for the rebound, goes to the ground. And Gilgis Alexander comes away with it. These, these two teams need a timeout. Yeah, no doubt. You see, you see Herbert Jones with his hands on his knees. Gabriel for three. And Green, the offensive rebound. 
wide open. Green over to Knox, his triple. No good. Follows his shot, puts it right back up. Side of the backboard, gets it back up again, and he's fouled. CBS Sports College Basketball coverage is sponsored by Buick, proud partner of the NCAA. Capital One Venture Card, what's in your wallet? And by Buffalo Wild Wings, Wings Beer Sports. How about this, during the timeout, a guy just made a half quarter for 10 grand here in Rupp Arena, there he is. Legend. <laughs> More money than you made on the golf course this week. Let's take a look at our at and fast analysis, coach. Well, one thing about Alabama, they're playing zone in this particular possession, and Kentucky does a great job of getting the ball into that high post area that Gilchrist Alexander draws the attention. He gets it to Nick Richard for the finish right there. That's why getting the ball to that area against the zone is so important to cause indecision. Coach, rebounds now a big problem for Alabama. They're out-rebounded this half 13-5 to for the game. They're minus 16. This half, Kentucky has seven offensive rebounds. Alabama has five total rebounds. And the reason why they're hanging in there is because they only have seven turnovers for the game, whereas Kentucky gets 13. So that's where they're getting, evening out the possessions as best they can. Another problem for Avery Johnson, Kevin Knox is starting to heat up. Couple of field goals, couple of free throws. And Kentucky has now made 12 straight from the line. They lead it by two. Well, that's a real plus for them. Came in shooting just 68% from the line. Key three. Well short. And Washington back in the game. Remember, he was limping earlier. Colin Sexton can't get in the lane right now. Great oh, wide open Diallo. Sexton has not scored this half. Calling for the ball down low. Very physical down there. And a foul is called on Green. Well, you take a look at here what happens with Braxton Key, number 25. Go ahead, run it from there. You're going to see Braxton Key pointing. He points there, but nobody goes. <laughs> and Diallo ends up by himself for the layup. So you got to talk and really communicate that to make sure your teammates know you got to get him. Key goes out, and Ingram returns for Alabama with three fouls. Sexton for three. The follow by Ingram. Great anticipation by the sophomore out of Theodore, Alabama. And that time, Kentucky got caught watching the ball and not putting a body on Dazon Ingram. Past the midway point of the second half. What a game here today on CBS. Here's Green. Kick out. Gabriel three. And the rebound to Sexton. Not going to get a better three than that. Jones baseline. Tried to hand it off to Hall. Goes out of bounds. Last touch by Green. Nice job by Quade Green. You know, we diagrammed that play before uh, at halftime where he didn't get to the line of the ball. This time he got to the line of the ball. And that's why he was able to knock that out of bounds. Diallo out and Gilgis Alexander returns for the Wildcats trying to stop a four game losing streak Avery Johnson jr. Checked into the game here for the top Johnson jr. Hits Second season playing for his dad after one year at Texas A&M and that ties the game at 56 Here's Knox, attacking, off class for two. Knox has nine. See, he's the one guy, when he shot fakes, you gotta respect it because he's a three-point shooter, but you have to stay on the ground and not allow him to get you off your feet or out of your stance. Stay with your knees bent. 
Sexton calls to the screen. Drives right in, blocked by Gabriel. Comes right to Hall. Hall up, and he scores with the foul. What a block by Gabriel, but Alabama has the last lap. And how about Dante Hall? Seven for eight for the game. How many guys come into a game shooting 75% and they go up after the game? He's five for five <laughs> this half. <laughs> and Gabriel now has four fouls, so he goes out. And Vanderbilt back in for John Calipari. We mentioned this earlier. Kentucky's not been able to finish games down the stretch. Can they turn that around today against Alabama as the Crimson Tide go up by one? Eight and a half to go. Knox at baseline curl. Worked to perfection Wednesday and he cleans it up. Knox now in double figures. He's got 11. One thing about running a curl like that, you end up with a whole lot of guys in the lane to offensive rebound, and that's what happened. But Alabama has got to do something about the glass. Knox has scored 11 points in just over five minutes. Johnson Jr. Around Green. Johnson Jr. to the hoop. No good. Hall fighting for the basketball. And it goes out of bounds. It'll be Kentucky ball when we come back. Well, Kevin Knox didn't play much in the first half, but he's starting to heat up now for the Cats. They lead by one. Back at Rupp Arena with our game summary, you can see Alabama's getting crushed on the glass, but because Kentucky has nearly twice as many turnovers, we've got a one-point game. However, for Kentucky, here comes Kevin Knox, coach. Well, he was in foul trouble in the first half, didn't do anything, got 11 points here so far in the second half. This kid can do a little bit of everything. He's the best offensive player for Kentucky. If they're going to close this game out and finish up strong, they need Kevin Knox because we've talked about how inconsistent really everybody else on the team is from an offensive standpoint. This kid cannot disappear now. Knox has 11 of Kentucky's last 13 points. Meanwhile, the other well-talked-about freshman in this game, Colin Sexton, 0 for 3 this half, has not scored. Give John Calipari a lot of credit. A lot of their game planning yesterday revolved around stopping dribble penetration. Colin Sexton's had all kinds of trouble just trying to get into the lane. Hey. Washington. Counted in the foul. Well, it gets good position there, and I'll say this, to me, it looks to me like Washington is the best post-up threat that Kentucky has, and I think that's a good thing for them to develop, because they need somebody close to the basket that can make an offensive big man move. Washington with the three-point play. It's the third foul on Dante Hall with seven and a half to go. These fans are loud at Rupp. Sexton is fouled. And will go on Quade Green. His third. They could have let that one go, I think. It was a little bit of contact. Two shots for Colin Sexton. Wednesday, February 28th, the worst nightmares of past survivors will haunt the dreams of the newest castaways. Brace yourself for Survivor Ghost Island premieres Wednesday, February 28th on CBS. Sexton makes them both. Here's Vanderbilt, right through the paint, missed it. Washington gets it back, and he's fouled. Wow, not sure how Vanderbilt missed that one, but Kentucky bailed out by that foul call. I mean, he's got to go up and slam this Vanderbilt. I mean, he's right there with a guard on him, Dazon Ingram, and he takes it really kind of weak. But thankfully, 
for Kentucky. Washington was there. All over the glass, Kentucky is. They have 16 offensive rebounds, nine this half. Well, if you told Avery Johnson before the game you're going to give up 16 offensive rebounds and be down two with seven minutes to go, he'd have taken that in a heartbeat. Vanderbilt comes out. Richards returns. Avery Johnson has to be really happy, though, with the team's turnovers. They average almost 14 a game. They only have seven today. Well, Kentucky's streak, uh, 13 consecutive free throws ends. Washington one out of two. Kentucky is still 15 of 17 at the line today, and their lead is three. Quade Green trying to deny Colin Sexton the ball. Six on the shot clock. Ingram travels. Monday on Colbert, don't miss Tom Hanks. And then later this week, Stevens all new with Bon Jovi, J.J. Abrams, and Christine Baranski. This week on CBS. That's only the second turnover this half by Alabama. And you know, that turnover came because Quade Green was denying Colin Sexton the ball. They tried to get it to him, and then Ingram just tried to make a play, and he traveled. Gilgis Alexander got away with a bad pass there. Right to Green, who hits the three. Petty is fouled before the shot as this crowd was loud as Quade Green now has a dozen after that corner three. Knox picks up his third foul. You know, both teams have not been getting good play from their point guards because Gilgis Alexander, he got away with one there. He has not been able to get in the lane much either. So John Petty, the freshman out of Huntsville, Alabama, at the line for a one and one. Petty's final two choices when it came down to making a collegiate decision, Alabama and Kentucky. And the Alabama native, two-time Mr. Basketball in Alabama, decided to stay at home and play for Avery Johnson. Six minutes to go. What a game here in the SEC on CBS. Gilgis Alexander in traffic and gets it back. Nearly turned it over. Shot clock does not reset. It's at five. Gilgis Alexander again inside. No, Richards catches it. Blocked by Hall and a tie-up. Possession arrow favors Alabama. Great defense by Dante Hall. And I, I think you're seeing here what Kentucky's issues have been, especially at the end of the shot clock. They don't have a guy that can really create something and get to the basket. Gilgis Alexander tried to there and was not able to. And that, when you don't have a guy that can make a play happen to you, for you, at the end of the shot clock, it becomes tough. Diallo back in the game for Kentucky. Inside five and a half to play. Sexton, tough shot for two. Wow, fade away off the glass. His first field goal this half, and it cuts the deficit down to two. John Calipari wants a timeout. 5-12 to go. A two-point Kentucky lead. In this one, a two-point Kentucky lead. Each team has four players in double figures. Alabama trying to win at Rupp Arena for the first time in 12 years. They have not won here since 2006. Gorgeous Alexander trying to break free to get the ball. He does. He's just two for eight today. 
And now five on the shot clock. He's guarded by Hall. Drives. Missed it. The follow. No. Tipped around. And Georges Alexander gets it back. Here's Knox. Deep three. Short. Tip right to Green and another fresh 30 for the Wildcats. This offensive rebounding has been brutal on Alabama. 19 offensive rebounds for Kentucky, 12 this half. Washington down low, lays it in. I, I like this kid. This kid can score in the post. Petty for three, no good. He was able to get the offensive rebound. He goes up and is fouled. That was a big rebound for Braxton Key. That time, Kentucky a little slow in getting back. And that's why they weren't in position here to get this rebound. They were scrambling a little bit. Second foul on Richards, and Braxton Key will get two shots. Celebrated his 21st birthday this past Wednesday, the sophomore out of Charlotte. Missed a lot of games early with that knee. This kid was all freshman team in the SEC last year. He has not played up to that level that he played at as a freshman. Preseason knee surgery, so he missed the first 10 games. Last year averaged 12 points per game. This year, a shade under seven. He goes one out of two at the line. You know, you look for where's Kentucky going to get offense. They got to get Kevin Knox either on that curl or off those baseline screens they like to set for him. Well, they tried the curl and the baseline. Here's Washington. He's had the hot hand in the second half. Not that time. And the rebound to Herbert Jones. Here comes Sexton. As we approach three and a half minutes to go. That was a bad pass by Sexton, but a foul on Richards. And it takes us to a timeout. We're set up for a big finish from Ruff right here on CBS. Welcome back to Ruff Arena with Steve Lapis. I'm Andrew Catalano. Look at our game reset. A one possession game. Kentucky leads by three. Ten team fouls against the Wildcats. Only five for Alabama with 335 to go in this one Alabama trying to hand John Calipari his fifth straight loss what a win this would be for the Crimson Tide in a building they have not won in in 12 years Alabama 12 of 19 at the line today although they've made six of their last set two for Hall and he misses the first he hasn't been close that's three in a row from him and none of them have been close Hall leading the team in scoring today with 15 points. Make it 16, a two-point game. 12 of Hall's 16 points have come here in the second half. Washington gets it to Quad A Green. He's had a real nice game off the bench for Kentucky today. What a Green, pass. the feed, and Vanderbilt the finish. This kid has created a lot more than Gilgis Alexander has today, I'll tell you. And he played point guard for the first part of the season. Timeout Avery Johnson. 3-0-3 to go. It's a four-point Kentucky lead. Coming up next on CBS, third round of the Genesis Open from Riviera. Coverage is now available on PGATourLive.com. And CBSSports.com will take you there as soon as we're done here in Lexington. Quad A Green, 12 points, four assists, no turnovers. What a day for the freshman out of Philadelphia. His 12 points, part of 33 points that have come off the Kentucky bench today. And they also have 16 rebounds. How about they have 19 offensive rebounds on 35 misses? That's over 50% they've been grabbing their misses. That would be easily, put it this way, if you, if you offensive rebound 35%, it's a lot. Alabama has one timeout remaining, two for Kentucky. 
Sexton has been held in check today by this Kentucky defense. Here is Sexton, guarded by Green. Sexton's pass is picked off by Gilgis Alexander. Crowley Green has done a great job. Sexton wanted to take him, and he could not do it. Great job by Quade Green defensively. Gilgis Alexander told us at practice yesterday that Kentucky's had several players-only meetings the last couple of weeks. And a foul is called down low. But as Gilgis Alexander said, tough times has brought us closer together, and they need that now. Well, there's no doubt about it, but I think P.J. Washington has really been a big plus inside the paint for John Calipari in this game. You know what's funny? They had a player's only meeting. Who ran the meeting? A freshman? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You usually have a junior or senior running the team meeting. Washington misses from the line. A lot of practice yesterday here in Lexington for John Calipari was about trust, trusting each other. And if you're not going to be a team player, I'm going to take you out of the game. What message was sent to the Wildcats today, trying to stop their four-game losing streak. Washington one out of two. Five-point game, 220 to go. Petty calling for it. He's got it. His pass is deflected and taken away. A steal by Gilgis Alexander. And Kentucky calls timeout. With 2-11 to go. Back-to-back -back turnovers by Alabama. Kentucky ball, they lead by five. This half, in the first 17 minutes, Alabama had two turnovers. Last two trips, they've turned it over twice because of the defense of Gilgis Alexander. Yeah, he has been really good seeing what's going on behind it. But I have to say, besides the fact he was the recipient of the steal there, he took the ball right from uh, John Petty. Quade Green, I think together, these two point guards, because they're both point guards, have done a terrific job on both ends of the floor. Gilgis Alexander, not so much on the offensive end, but defensively very good. His mom, Charmaine Gilgis, was a phenomenal track athlete in Alabama, but she's rooting for Kentucky today as they up their lead to seven. This matches their largest lead. Ingram tough off the glass for two. Yeah, that was pretty good defense by Kevin Knox that time. Here's that press. They just threw it over the top the last time the Vanderbilt. They took it to the basket. John Calipari calling out a play from the Kentucky bench. Gilgis Alexander drives. The putback is good by Vanderbilt. They were lucky there because Gilgis Alexander's shot was really bad. Just dominating the glass, Kentucky in this game. That shot won't go for Sexton, and another rebound for Vanderbilt. One minute to go. Good job by Quadi Green not shooting that ball. And there's the foul. Kentucky is out rebounding Alabama by 19, including 20 offensive rebounds for the Wildcats. Hey, Avery Johnson told us before the game how worried he was about the glass. But you know what you see, Andrew? I see defensively in these Kentucky's kids' eyes a, an intensity like we're getting this one no matter what. Largest lead for the Wildcats. 77 to 69. And I think Alabama's made some bad decisions in this last minute or so. Petty lost it. Another steal by Gilgis Alexander. And there's the foul by Sexton with 44 seconds to go. His fourth. And you see Gilgis Alexander bringing them together. He's emerging as a leader on this Kentucky team. 
Yeah, I think you're absolutely right, but this is really good defense there. And it really was good communication between Quade Green and Shea Gilgis Alexander. A 9-2 run for Kentucky with Knox at the line. points for Kevin Knox. Everything going Kentucky's way. Trying to put this one away with 43 seconds to go. And that time Vanderbilt was a one-man press and Reese just threw a terrible pass that went off Colin Sexton's hand. They're not going to foul? They do with 40 seconds to go. Alabama with four turnovers in the last two minutes and 50 seconds. And after they had done a great job through the whole course of the game of not turning it over because they turned it over all year. Green misses the front end of the one and one. Down 11, here's Sexton all the way for two. And Avery Johnson uses his final timeout with 31 seconds to go. It's a nine-point game. It's been a great crowd at Rupp Arena today. And Kentucky on the verge of a much-needed win. Their last five-game losing streak was during the 89-90 season. And if it plays out like we see with 31 seconds to go, it'll remain their last five-game losing streak. I think one of the things that I'll take away from this game today, Coach, is the strength of the SEC and what a great year this conference has had. No doubt about what a game. It. Very deep conference. I don't know if there's a... Auburn, obviously, is a high seed right now. We'll see. Gilgis Alexander's pass nearly taken away, but Washington corrals it, and he's fouled with 22 to go. I'll tell you another thing, as you, as you look ahead to March, these two teams are going to be difficult to see because you see flashes where there may be Final Four good, and you see flashes where some people are saying they don't even belong in the tournament. Not really for Alabama, but you understand what I'm saying. It's oh, been no. tough to seed these two teams. Put it this way. Let's say, like, if we're tournament with today, Alabama's a nine seed. If you're a one seed, you're Xavier, you're Villanova, you're Purdue, whoever the ones, we don't even know who's going to be the one. Yeah. And you got to play them in the second game? <laughs> good luck. Kentucky 80% at the free throw line today. As Sexton turns it over, and then Gabriel comes down accidentally on Sexton's head. Sexton appears to be okay. Upcoming schedule for Kentucky. They've got four games left in the regular season. Tuesday at Arkansas, followed by games against Missouri, who they already lost to, Ole Miss, and Florida, who they already lost to. That Florida game in Gainesville on CBS March 3rd. Well, you know, fourth place in the SEC is not out of the question for them, which would give you a double bye, I believe, in the SEC tournament. So, something definitely to strive for. Update the standings, giving Kentucky the win. And you see now Alabama and Kentucky separated by just one game. They could easily climb into that top four. Sexton fouled out. So he's done. 12 points for Sexton on 4 of 11 shooting. And that will do it from Rupp Arena where Kentucky stops a four-game losing streak with an 81-71 to 71 win. For Steve Lapis, this is Andrew Catalan saying so long from Lexington. Coming up next, third-round coverage of the Genesis Open.
This has been a presentation of CBS Sports. We'll send you to Riviera right after these messages.